welcome to my YouTube channel, Love for Intuitive Astrology. So today I will talk about the upcoming year of 2025 for the sign of Libra. So this video is for everyone with the Libra sun, moon and rising, but I would say most accurate is Libra rising and sun. Okay, and I'm going to talk in this video about the outer planets, so the slow moving planets, the shifting planets, which are going to be in another sign this year, in which house that's going to be for you. And also we're going to discuss all the best months for love, for money and all that stuff. So Libra, let's start and see what this year is going to bring for you. So we're starting off with Mars retrograde, okay? And Mars is going to be in the sign of Leo, slowly shifting through Cancer, and it's going to end and station direct on the 23rd of February, 2025. Now it's going through your house of friendships and through the house of career. And when we look at Mars, this is a very forwarding planet, very action-oriented and very masculine planet. So it wants to take action, but when it's retrograde, you're going to be kind of hold or held back and it's going to be like, okay, let's slow down and have a look at what you've done in the past and see what frustrates you or what brings anger or what needs some revision. So when it comes to your friendships, there might be some irritations coming up regarding someone. And it's very often something that's already in your body that you already experienced, but kind of pushed away. And it's going to just blur out because right now you're going to really internalize it and feel it. Okay. So there might be some shifts in your friendships happening and the same thing with your work. Okay. Your work, there might be some irritations coming up. And a lot of you have cancer in the 10th house. So your workplace is literally the place where you feel at home. So if you're not starting to feel at home at where you work or with what you do, there might be some frustrations happening there. Okay. Um, so then after the 23rd, Mars is stationing direct. And on the 1st of March, Venus is stationing retrograde. Yay. <laughs> This is so much fun. Let's continue. So Aries for you is in your seventh house. Okay. And when we have Venus retrograde, this has to do, we're going to do the same as with Mars, but Venus is going to internalize. It's going back to the past. So you might hear from people from the past, mostly romantic because it's in the seventh house of relationships could be business partners from the past. Okay. Uh, or simply you're going to revise your past, your past marriage, your past relationships, and you're going to look at the things you want to do differently. Because Aries in the seventh house, you're attracting people that um, are maybe very focused on themselves and you could have lost yourself in relationships because you were trying to maintain the balance, okay? And now it's time for you to really see what is a healthy balance because ultimately what you want to achieve is balance. Okay. And you can only be balanced with Libra in the first house or on the ascendant when you have someone that is balancing that with you, someone that is motivating you to also highlight your own personality. So it's give and take. That's where you stand best. Okay. Um, there is going to be a huge emphasis on relationships as some might be a bit uncomfortable for you. Okay. There are going to be good news after this. I promise you Libra, there's going to be good news as well. And I feel that sometimes we need to learn our lessons in order to move forward. Okay. So Chiron in the seventh house is really telling you, are you giving a little too much to your relationships in your one-to-one -one relationships? So romantic or just with your clients, if you do uh, sessions with clients one-on-one, -on -one, are you giving a little too much of yourself? So Saturn starts off in the sixth house in Pisces up until the 25th of May when it's moving in your seventh house. Okay. So this has to do with your relationships 
And when Saturn is in the sixth house, this is more about your health. Um, it really uh, makes you work hard. So take a lot of responsibility in the workplace. Or it could be restricting work, okay? Maybe there's not enough work to do and that gives a type of frustration. So the best way to work with Saturn is to take responsibility and work on your routine. So healthy food, uh, healthy workouts, um, have a good strong routine for your work. And if you have a good strong routine for your work, Saturn will reward you. So between the 25th of May and the 1st of September, Saturn is in the seventh house. And then on the 30th of May, right, just a few days after, Neptune is also going to be in the sign of Aries, also in your seventh house. And Aries and Saturn are going to dance together the whole year. They're going to be together the whole year. And Neptune is really creating kind of an illusion, right? It's also spirituality. So it's like you could either attract a very spiritual person because it's in the seventh house. Um, but Saturn is really grounding you. So you're going to be like, oh, I want to attract this and that and that type of person. And Saturn is like, but wait a minute, you want all these qualities. What are you going to do to attract that? So it's going to ground you, which I really like. And it's going to show you what it is that you need in order to be in a serious relationship. Because Saturn is serious. It doesn't want to play around. You're not going to be with someone that wants a fling. You're all in it or you're not in it. Libra, this is really your theme of this year. The same thing with Pluto. It's in the fifth house, okay? And it's going to stay there until 2044. So this is not a small thing. You're going to really uh, transform yourself when it comes to romance. And um, you're going to really figure out what you accept and what you don't accept. And you're going to find the right boundaries for that. Similarly, well, Pluto in the fifth house is also about your children. Okay, so there might be a lot of transformation happening with your kids. Um, they might rebel a little bit if they're in their teens or they're a bit older. You're going to have to learn how to let them make mistakes. It's going to be hard because you want to protect your kids from making mistakes, right? But you can't control. So this is another lesson. But I want to say something positive. So let's go to the positive stuff. Jupiter in the ninth house up until the 9th of June is going to make you travel. It's going to make you very curious. It's going to be studying all kinds of subjects, studying languages. Um, if you want to work online and travel, this is an amazing time to do that. And after the 9th of June, your career is going to take off huge, Libra. I'm saying huge, especially Libra rising, okay? Libra rising, really, your career can take off. Jupiter is really feeling comfortable in Cancer, okay? It's exalted in Cancer and it can take off your career big time, okay? So if you have, you better start making plans when you watch this video. Could be 2025 already, but if you're in 2024, Make some good business plan if you want to launch something, okay? Especially regarding um, if you want to sell property, if you are in real estate or family therapy, family business, this is very good for you, okay? So get ready or if you're in the spiritual business or teacher or something like that, it's, it's going to be really good for you. Then we have Uranus moving from the 8th house a little bit in the ninth house in Gemini. So Jupiter is going to Cancer. And on the 7th of July, we have Uranus in the ninth house, really opening your curiosity even more, exploring weird subjects, numerology, astrology, traveling to funny places, like exploring very interesting travel destinations, okay? Maybe you want to do some retreats, uh, doing things out of the box and exploring them, uh, reporting on them, you know, making a YouTube channel about everything you're discovering. This is a time to explore. So it's going from the eighth house to the ninth house, back to the eighth house on the 8th of November. 
And when Uranus is in Taurus, right, in the eighth house, it's about finances. Like it's a bit unstable when it comes to third party money, like insurance or taxes. And I'm hearing cats fighting outside. hope they're <clears throat> figuring it out it's probably my cat she's a bit of a fighter yep they're calling her the queen uh queen maxima in the neighborhood which is the dutch queen <laughs> yeah she can be a little queen-like like it's her property and nobody can enter so yeah i'm gonna check that out soon but i'm serious about this video <laughs> so i'm gonna continue uh for you libra um, so yeah, traveling, career, curiosity, eighth house is also about uh, your psychic abilities, exploring everything related to, you know, everything related to, how do you say that, psychic readings or spirituality, the occult, and learn more about that and how to break your patterns. And you can be really like open about that, right? It could also be a time where you may be were a little bit more open like you know open relationship and open whatever and you might just change your mind about that when uranus is going to be in the ninth house okay so there might be some kind of shift happening at the beginning of the year we also have the north node moving in the sign of pisces and this is in your sixth house so from the 29th of january the north node is in pisces and going to stay there for the rest of the year and the south node is in Virgo. So a lot of you are going to focus on your routines and you're going to get a lot of stuff done. Okay, It's going to be a very much career focused year for you. And it really requires maybe for you to have good steady routine, routines, good food, because without good energy, we cannot finish all the things we want to do. Okay, so very good for career. Let's look at the the months that are best for travel and love and all these things so your travel months obviously is going to be january until june and then november and december these are your travel months libra health months february and march then we have money months okay october and november these are your money months January, February, March, and April. These are your love months, but there will be a huge subject in general about your love life, okay? You're, you're gonna experience either very serious love and you're gonna learn so much on how uh, great relationships work, but it's either serious or it's nothing, okay? And then we have months that are good for moving, January and December. But also because Jupiter is in Cancer after June, it might be good the second half year to move, but it would be for work, okay? Moving for work would be very, very beneficial for you as well. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes open. I'm so excited for you. It's going to be a very full year. A lot of things happening, a lot of things in many areas in your life. So be prepared. Let me know in the comments what are your plans for 2025? What are you gonna what are you gonna do? What are your plans? And uh, before we close this reading, I just want to announce that I'm gonna do several intuitive astrology retreats. So meditation and uh, astrology workshops. It's gonna be so much fun. It's a whole week. Uh, it's in our retreat center in uh, really in the middle of nowhere. It's a bit of a trip to get here but you're gonna be in the middle of nature, really disconnected away from everything. The only thing you hear is fighting cats, maybe some dogs or sheep, <laughs> but uh, it's really a good place to disconnect, come back to yourself with a lot of hiking trails. So it's beautiful. So have a look at my site. you find it in the description box and I'm wishing you a happy new year, Libra. All the best to you. See you next time. Bye-bye.